said it is a beautiful sunny day in Vegas. What's up, dude? What's up? It's hot though. Glad we're going inside. <laughs> Where are we at? We're kind of in the hood. We are at University of Las Vegas. We are going to the sports science laboratory today to test some shoes. So we got the uh, a few different pairs of carbons here and the goal of today is to figure out which shoe is the fastest for me specifically. So we got the Puma Nitro Elite 3. Beautiful shoe, a lot of hype around this one. I've never ran in them. Supposed to be faster than the Alpha Fly, but we will see today if it is true. Then we have the Hoka Rocket X2. I've raced a few races in these, really comfortable feeling. We'll see how they perform. And then the trusty stable wife of the staple, the Alpha Fly 3. So, come along with us. We're gonna go into the lab today. We're gonna do some VO2, oxygen, uptake, heart rate, threshold reps to see which one is the best. All right, I'm uh, Dr. John Mercer, professor in, at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I'm in the Department of Kinesiology and Nutrition Sciences, and I'm part of the leadership team for UNLV Sports Innovation Institute. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a pro triathlete, Justin Reale, and look at running economy. And more importantly, we're gonna look at running economy while running in different pairs of shoes. So he's interested in what's the right shoe for him, and what we know with all the research we've done on running shoes is the right shoe for each person is very individualized. The right shoe for me, the right shoe for Justin is not necessarily the right shoe for somebody else. And so it all depends on how you're built, how you run, and how fast you run. And so today what we're gonna do is a running economy test with uh, I think it's three different pairs of shoes. And we're gonna use the same speed and we're gonna measure rate of oxygen consumption to determine how fast he's using oxygen to run. And so some of the things that we control when we do an experiment like this is one, we do it in a laboratory. It'd be great if we were doing it out in the field, but once we, we start uh, trying to measure things outside in the wild, we've got some other things to, to consider. We've got uh, changes in weather. Uh, we got changes in road in terms of uh, which way the road sort of canters. Uh, we've got changes in how the road is in terms of going uphill or downhill. So the reason of coming into the lab is we've got a very controlled running environment, which is good for reproducibility of research. Uh, so we'll have them running on a treadmill, on a level treadmill. We're gonna set the speed, the, the treadmill will maintain that speed, and that will help in sense of uh, the experiment we're gonna do. Well, I'm definitely testing on tired legs today. Good race. Anything I'll mess with the data? No, I think it's better data because your legs are so smashed coming off the bike. Might as well test on tired legs. The protocol was two rounds of five minutes in each shoe at 10.3 miles an hour. That's five minutes and 50 seconds per mile pace. That equates to a 1.15.30 half marathon. So my goal, 70.3 race pace for these next few races. I 
Capitals. Round two. <laughs> Let's go. I'm not sure which one I like the best, but the Puma felt the most responsive, and the Nikes and the Hokas feel similar. Heart rate is super low. Feeling pretty fit. <laughs> So here's the data. Round one was interesting. What happened was, what I think, is I was getting warmed up. And that first effort, if you've ever done a workout under fatigue, it can always kind of feel like shit. And so in the first round of the Nike Alpha Fly, I put them on, I wasn't feeling great. My body was getting used to the fast running for the first time. Heart rate kind of jumped, carbohydrate utilization was, was you know, on its way up. Um, and it just felt weird, but it felt fine. And then the second rep, I put on the Pumas different feel, super, super stiff, almost like no shoe at all. They're definitely lighter, but they lack the stability that the Nike has, and there's a lot less shoe on the Puma. Um, the rep went fine, but I wasn't feeling great. Then I put on the Hoka Rocket X2 for the last rep. My heart rate started to drop, and I kind of felt like shit, and I was just like, oh, this is weird. Like, let me just get through this round. Maybe I'll reset. So I got off the treadmill after the third rep, had a quick gel, a quick water, took two minutes, and then I started the round two. And what was interesting is after those first three reps, I finally actually felt warmed up. So if I were to do this test again, I would have done uh, some extra work up front to get into a steadier state because I don't think I really got into that steady state until after the first three reps. So then I went through the protocol again. I started with the Nikes and then the Pumas and then the Rockets. And all three of those reps, four, five, and six, felt very equal. They felt five out of 10 hard, medium effort, in control, and I wasn't looking at any of the numbers and I honestly couldn't tell which one was the best or which one was the fastest. When we look at the data, uh, all six tests, I kind of had decided even when I was testing, I'm gonna throw out the first round of data because the perception was so weird. Um, I wanted like stable perceived efforts from a qualitative perspective to be able to compare each shoe. And the second round, four, five, and six are the data we're gonna use basically. And what's interesting is it's almost not usable because the data just creeped up one um, about one and a half percent VO2 max utilization each rep from the Nikes, the Pumas, the Hoka. So one could say, okay, well, the Nikes are about 1% more efficient than the Puma, which is about 1% more efficient than the Hoka. The problem is maybe as you progress each rep, four, five, and six, with slight core temperature rising and slight increased fatigue from the extra reps, you might be just losing that 1% of efficiency. So Unfortunately, the conclusions are a little bit inconclusive because we can't really tell whether the shoe is leading to that inefficiency of 1% or if it's rep four, five, and six. So if I were to do the test again, I would switch the order of the shoes because of course, if we saw that the Hoka, Puma, Nike in that order showed the same results, 
then we could assume that it is actually because of just extra reps and that all shoes are equal. So my finding for this is that I'm going with the Nike Alpha Fly because it feels the best. Um, it's the most shoe. I think it's the most comfortable and forgiving shoe with the least amount of pronation and the most stability control off the bike on smashed legs. So I was kind of hoping that would be the winner. That's what I've been racing in, what I like the best. Um, and, you know, even if we assume there was a bit of uh, fatigue induced in reps five and six, I'm going to go with the lowest percent of VO2 max and the lowest respir respiratory exchange rate, which is basically uh, the amount of fat uh, oxidation that I'm utilizing versus carbohydrates. So all, all things considered, I'm really happy with the test. Uh, at the end of the day, I was running you know, 30 minutes at 550 per mile pace with a really low heart rate and, you know, primarily fat burning zone. And so I'm just hoping that that can translate to a great performance off the bike and, you know, stay tuned. Maybe we'll do this test again. But at the end of the day, I think my takeaway and what I'm going to tell people is like, pick the shoe that is the most comfortable and the fastest for you. Use a new pair of carbon shoes and don't worry too much about brand A versus brand B. You got to go with what fits the best. And, you know, if it's a high-end carbon shoe in the $250 to $300 range, it's probably pretty damn good.